I'm back to this evening on Tier and TSW. In just a moment, John Wormsley presents this month's edition of Compass. At seven o'clock, we're off to warmer climes. When Wish You Were Here looks at that, it looks at Tur what Turkey has to offer the British holidaymaker. The McDonald's are still rowing in Coronation Street at seven thirty, and that's followed by some comic relief at eight o'clock in the shape of the Upper Hand. World in Action is at eight thirty, and then at nine o'clock, the last in the present series of Shrinks. After the news at ten forty, there's murder, mayhem, and just a little romance in a special feature-length episode of Beauty and the Beast, which takes us through until night time. And that's a look at this Monday evening here on TSW. But now it's time for Compass. <laughs> A Cornish tin mine, one of just two remaining. There used to be hundreds. Now the two mines, Wheel Jane and South Crofty, are under sentence of death. So too is the tin mining industry, with its traditions in Cornwall going back 2,000 years. Wheel Jane is already slowly dying, drowning inch by inch as the tunnels flood. South Crofty has lodged an appeal. It doesn't look hopeful. It's not just tradition that is at stake, it's the livelihoods of hundreds of workers and the economy of a large part of Cornwall. It almost brings tears to your eyes. Uh, it's been part of my life for nine years, it's been part of the whole workforce life and uh, they're a marvellous workforce. Uh, I've seen more grown men cry in the last ten days than I wish to see in the rest of my life really. It's tragic. As the last cages travel the 1,700 feet to the surface of Wheel Jane, the miners know it's doomed. It's only chance at a future to be turned into a giant leisure park. Exactly four weeks ago, the boss of Carnan Consolidated, which runs the two mines, was telephoned by a civil servant in Whitehall. What he said dropped like a bombshell. The first Carnan Holdings miners knew that the company was in deep trouble was when they were turned away from South Crofty and Wheel Jane this morning. Two days ago, the Cornish tin industry received the devastating news that the two remaining mines were to close with the loss of 400... Jane is to be the government, said the civil days. servant, had decided to withhold the last payment in a bailout package agreed in 1986. It was a general cost-cutting exercise in all government departments. What the call meant was that Carnan Consolidated could no longer hope to produce tin at its two mines. Over 400 jobs were put in jeopardy, and a five-year battle to keep production going was lost. The decision of the Secretary of State for Trade and Industry, and it is his specific decision, to cut this lifeline to the tin mines is appalling and comes as a tragic blow to all those concerned about the mines, and in particular to those who will lose their jobs. MPs from all sides had joined the fight to keep tin mining in Cornwall. In 1986, when the then owners, RTZ, pulled out, the existing managers, backed by a government grant, took over. Now the government has said no to any more money, just when it's claimed the downward spiral has been reversed. Wheel Jane is a mine that we intended to shut anyway, which was losing money. South Crofty is a mine that we're, get, that we're getting better and better at every day in terms of our production cost. We've now been forced to close Jane very rapidly and South Crofty continues to improve but what we've said to the employees and we've all done it, everybody from the, the managing director down, we've all come back to work on a, on a new contract at vastly reduced wages, that's had an effect on our ability to produce tin. We're so close to being profitable that we, this is perhaps why we have some difficulty in understanding the decision because the job was nearly finished and we just have to finish it off. What did you think about that? I'm not very happy about it. Um, I see no merit in getting in an acrimonious debate. I mean, I don't agree with the decision, and I think it's a bad decision. Nigel Durrant and his family live at Illuggan. A wheel Jane miner for 10 years, he was due to transfer to South Crofty. That's gone now. For the first time in his working life, he's collecting the dole. 
I know there's a, a recession everywhere, and tin mining is probably one of the biggest recessions of the lot at the moment. I don't really want to stay on the dole for, you know, too long, but if I got through then there's nothing else I can do. There you go. Can I get you anything? Yes, my, my doll check. You've just got to change your lifestyle, really. Cut down on things and not have such things as what you had before, really, to a certain extent. That's life. <laughs> don't think so. Nigel believes he will never return to Wheel Jane, save as a sightseer visiting the proposed theme park. There's not much for him to return to. Gradually, the machinery is being dismantled and brought to the surface, just ahead of the steadily rising water. Myself and a lot of other people that are supposed to supposedly go in to Seth Crofty as a transfer from Wheel Jane, because we knew Wheel Jane had only had about six to ten months' work left anyway. How were you told? Point blank at the Plaza Cinema on Monday the 25th of March, and that was it. It was told by Brian Calver that the mines were shut in. There was no money coming from the government or anybody. That was it. What was the mood of the men? Um, well, everybody was very upset, and the mood... Well, what can I say? <laughs> it was just terrible, really. The mining in Cornwall is gone. It's just finished. Are you bitter? Um, no, I'm not bitter as such, not really. It's, I think the miners, you know, the management and the miners tried to keep the mines going and it's just the money just wasn't forthcoming from the DTI. It's just that I just can't understand the government because it's going to cost them just as much, really, to keep the men on the dole as what it would have to have give, in my point of view, to give the miners and the tin to mind them, you know, the money. Do you think you're actually seeing the end of mining in Cornwall? Um, I would like to say no. I think, to be truthful, yes. We've seen the end of the mining as, as far as I'm concerned at Wheel Jane. Because, uh, you know, they've obviously just, they've started flooding it and it will never be pumped out again. But hopefully South Crofty now, hopefully South Crofty there will be some money forthcoming for us to keep South Crofty going. And hopefully that they will get that money and keep going. There we go. In the last two decades, the tin mining industry worldwide has lurched from crisis to crisis. The simple fact is that tin ore is not used in the great quantities it has been. We still call it a tin of baked beans, but the tin content has been replaced by aluminium. One by one, the tin mines of Cornwall closed as the price of ore went down and the cost of producing from the deep level mines went up. Third world countries started dumping thousands of tons of tin on the world markets, forcing the price even lower. Throughout the 80s, Cornish tin mines disappeared and with them hundreds of jobs. By 1986, there were just three left, and one of those had to close to save the other two. After a long, unequal struggle, it was Giva, with its miles of tunnels spreading out under the sea, that lost out. Giva became just another ghost mine, a mine museum all that's left of what was once one of the most famous mines in Cornwall. The loss of 600 jobs was devastating to the far west of the county, already a severely depressed area. But the sacrifice of the Giva men was seen as a lifeline to the last remaining mines, Wheel Jane and South Crofty. Now it seems that they too will follow the other mines into oblivion, destined to become just other monuments in the Cornish landscape. The lonely sentinels that stand testimony to centuries of Cornish mining provided the bedrock for metal mining in America, Canada, Australia and South America. Down every mine you'll find a Cornishman, goes the saying. These cousin jacks went by their thousands to the new territories to do what they do best, mining. Now this is all that could be left.
The remaining miners at South Crofty have few choices open to them. Find alternative work in Cornwall, and there are few jobs to be had. Move up country, where the situation is almost as bad. Or do what generations of Cornishmen have done before. Leave Britain for mines in other countries. But the industry is depressed worldwide. The biggest tin mine in the world, in Australia, stopped producing this month. You know, a lot of people thought they had a job for life, but then it's gone, you know. I mean, there's circumstances beyond their control, like, isn't it, you know? Well, hopefully I'll find employment abroad or something like that. Go looking for work somewhere else. You have to go abroad? I would have to, yeah. I've got commitments that I've got to keep, and I would have to go looking for a job that would enable me to keep the commitments. What do you feel in your heart of hearts? Do you think it's all over? Yes, I think so. <laughs> they've taken pay cuts, they've taken pay freezes, they've increased production. They've done everything that's asked of them and more besides. They've done more than we ever told the DTI we would do in 1986, more than we told the Select Committee we could do. I think the, the government have treated us pretty deplorable. And uh, it doesn't make sense after they've given us the money before, they've seen what we can do, they've seen the results. We're down way below the price we said we would get down to to produce tin. And in spite of that, they have now refused money that is already earmarked to give to the mines. Is there any alternative work for members in Cornwall, or will they just have to go somewhere else? They will have to go somewhere else or take a job that is not suitable to them whatsoever, because these people that work in the mines go down there, it's all piecework, it's not, they don't get paid unless they work, and they only get paid for what they do, and they are used to hard labour and to start a, a complex, a tourist complex at uh, Wheel Jane and expect those people to work there is, is beyond a thought. In going into leisure, whilst we think it would be good for the business, we wouldn't operate it because we're not expert in leisure. We'd bring in a third party that would generate money for us through a new vehicle that then helps support the tin mine. And then in time, Crofty will come back and we'll see Perhaps we're seeing now a, a phoenix rising from the ashes, as long as the next three or four months goes right. Mining has always been a risk business. It's been a risk business forever, for always. And the fact is that if we close the tin mines in Cornwall, we will be re reliant on third world countries then. And heaven knows what the price of tin would be in 12 months, two years' time, if we close our tin mines down. So we could be held over a barrel? Well, certainly. Plus the fact that we only supplied half this country's needs in tin when we're in full production. It's about a third now, and the balance of payments will be severely affected. I don't think you can ever say tin is strategic for the simple logic that it's in oversupply. I mean, this is half the problem. It is in oversupply. Uh, the UK has never held a strategic stockpile. Uh, it would have to import from overseas, admittedly, but I, I can't see it being argued as being of strategic value. It's of economic value. It just merely means we have to import rather than produce at home. Camborne is a mining community. They live, eat and breathe tin here. Every day, ex-miners meet to discuss the crisis facing the industry they worked in. Around this table, nearly 200 years of mining experience. Well, I think it's a terrible thing because um, for the simple reason they've closed down an in industry that is the heart of Cornwall. Do you think Cornwall will suffer if there is no mining? Yeah, they will in the mining. Yes, I think, yes. They will because there'll be a lot of men out of work and we still got tin. We still got tin in the county. I think they should cough up. I think so. What will happen to those men with no work? Well, maybe they'll have to go abroad like they used to. Do you think with South Crofty going and Wheel Jane going, that the tradition of Cornish mining will go forever? Oh yes, yes, I do. You see, when uh, uh, Wheel Jane was uh, closed down back now, uh, Crofty stepped in to take it over. And uh, we thought then that, uh, well, things are looking bad because uh, Giever went. Uh, then we had East Pool went. We had all the mines around here, near here, went around the circle of Crofty. Would you want your sons, your grandchildren, to go down a mine? 
No, but it was the same with my father when I was a youngster. They didn't want me to go in the mine, but it was in the blood. My father, he went, he went to America up in the Copper Lake in Michigan, because he no work here. And he had me to bring up and my sister, and his wife, and I'd keep them in the paper the house. You take a man now that's been mining, say, ever since he was a young lad, left school. And now, he's, we will say he's around the 50-ish mark. What is it for him now? There's nothing. Not here. At Wheel Jane, the rumble of the underground mining machines has been replaced by the steady drip of rising water. As soon as the government's decision was known, the pumps that worked day and night to keep the levels dry were switched off. It means a saving of £15,000 a week. There is little hope of them ever being reopened. Men still toil underground, but it's skeleton teams with a soul-destroying job of making everything safe as the mine slowly ceases to exist. This is now about 250 feet above the bottom of the mine, and as you can see, the water's coming up. There's about, what, a kilometre down there? Yes, this tunnel goes, if you carry on down, it goes for almost another kilometre right down to the, the sump of the mine, the very bottom of the mine. The idea is to flood the entire mine at the moment, right up to adit level. Uh, we estimate that'll take between six and nine months, depending on how wet or dry the summer is. What will you do? Uh, I would like to stay in mining, but there's very little to do in the UK. Uh, I shall probably end up going abroad. Your average miner is not a particularly qualified man. He's going to find it a dance lot harder than, than maybe I will. Does it make you cross? Slightly, although I, am, uh, I understand economics as well, and maybe the, the time has come. During the last month, Carnan Consolidated has fought to prove that South Crofty is worth the 1.6 million earmarked by the government. Support in their fight has come from an unusual source. The very metal markets that condemn the Cornish tin industry in the first place. With the closing of the Australian mine and Wheel Jane, the price of tin has actually risen. An economically productive mine at South Crofty is the dream. Whole communities in Cornwall are dependent on that for a reprieve. What will happen if it doesn't come could turn into a nightmare. If the traders aren't selling, then they aren't going to employ. And therefore your 415 that you start with at, at, at the closure of the mines is going to end up somewhere probably double that, if not more. And this comes on top of the fact that this is a pretty depressed area anyway. Well, yeah, I mean, we've always had high unemployment here, which is annoying in a sense, because you get certain people saying, well, if we have high wages, then people are going to lose jobs. We've always had low wages down here. We've always had high unemployment. We can't afford to lose any of the traditions in this country. Uh, it's happening in Wales with the coal mines over there. There are very few coal mines left in Wales. But the government are pumping money in there, left, right and centre. Now, all we're asking the government down here is, give us back the 1.6 million. And that's a lot, lot less money than what they're pumping into Wales at the moment. Because there's more tin left down under this ground than was ever took out of it. And it's a better quality tin now than it ever was. So all I would say to the minister is, let's have the money back. Nothing, but there's nothing going. Obviously, it's a bit early to say about um, jobs I've applied for, sort of abroad and that type of thing. It's a little bit early to get any letters back from them yet. Would you go abroad? I would go abroad, yes. Yeah, definitely. Especially to stay in mining because I had 10 good years in mining and I really enjoyed it. I'd like to stay in it if I could. What about Nigel going abroad? Would you support him in that? Well, I'm Cornish born and bred. I've lived in Cornwall all my life. My family are here. I don't really want to go abroad, but if that's what he's got to do and he gets the job abroad, then I'll have to follow. For the sake of the family, really. I'm not a mason by trade, I'm not a mechanic or nothing like that. I've, mining is the only thing I know. And I'd like to you know, keep up with the mining, really, if I could. The Cornish tradition? The Cornish tradition. <laughs> it's ironic that one mine could still survive in Cornwall. A mine that doesn't produce anything except expertise. Every year, the world-famous Camborne School of Mines turns out young men and women who will become the hard rock mining engineers of the future. 
After three years in the classrooms and down the test mine, they'll spread to all corners of the globe, helping to bring precious minerals and metals from the ground. It's doubtful if the school would have existed without the influence of the industry all around it. It's true that would-be engineers are drawn to the school from many countries, but the Cornish are well represented. Cornish miners were proud to hand on their sons to be schooled as engineers and then to become worldwide experts in gold, diamond and copper mines from Johannesburg to Kalgoorlie. The youngsters today have the same hopes, but they've got to be realistic. I chose the School of Mines mainly because it's reputation worldwide in the hard rock industry. More than no, not just down here, it's a worldwide reputation. Martin, you come from Cornwall originally. Did you hope that you would be able to get a job in the county? Uh, yes, ideally. If there had been a future in Cornish tin mining, then I'd love to stay here. I've grown up here, I've lived here all my life, and would quite happily have, have gone into the industry. How do you see the picture at the moment? Um, very bleak, I'm afraid. The uh, whole industry seems to be going down the pan. Uh, Seth Crofty, although it's still on care and maintenance, um, things don't look too good for them. It's a shame uh, in so much as the deeper they go, the better the reserves seem to be getting, but uh, it's just too expensive nowadays to get them out and to compete with markets like Brazil and Malaysia. Philbert, you come from Tanzania. Are you worried about the recession in the mining industry worldwide? Of course, yes, because when there is a recession, it affects the whole aspects of jobs in the mining industry. But uh, from our case, or from my case, people from the third world who come here to get education to be able to develop uh, the resources from where we come from. What are you going to do? Um, change my uh, job at, um, areas in which I'm looking to go into. Um, possibly look towards the exploration companies, the research side of things. Um, otherwise move abroad to Australia, South Africa, uh, where the big production areas are. So you're going to be another cousin, Jane? Uh, yeah. There's uh, not many other options. Uh, there aren't, isn't a lot of uh, hard rock mining in England at the moment, and especially not in Cornwall. The world will always need to use its natural resources. The young men and women from the Camborne School will be at the forefront of the new technology that allows mines to go deeper and deeper, but they're not allowed to forget the history all around them. Do you think that in the future there will be Cornish miners trained at the Camborne College down mines throughout the world? I'm certain there will be engineers trained here mining internationally. Yes, that is for sure. Because the industry and the college has sort of grown hand in hand, is there a certain amount of sadness to what's going on around you? Oh, indeed, yes. I think anybody who's worked in the mining industry anywhere has a, a very strong feeling for it, and those of us in Cornwall, of course, have a great feeling for our industry. I personally don't believe the industry will totally vanish. I, I, I'm slightly optimistic, and I think we will, part of it will survive, but not as big as it has been in the past. How can it survive? I think you've got to look at history again. Um, we have a his historically low tin price, which I don't believe can be sustained at that level. I think it will increase. And being optimistic, I think one's got to be optimistic. Um, I believe that we'll survive. Personally, my family's been involved in mining for, for centuries. I mean, my father was a miner. I had two brothers that worked over Crofty Mine. My grandfather was a miner. His father was a miner before that, so you're talking generations. Now, that era has come to an end. And um, in a sense, I feel safe. Cornwall without a mining industry. It's been on the cards for years, but no one in the county thought it would ever happen. At least not for the sake of money already promised by the government. The fight is not over, yet there's a growing feeling that the decision makers so many miles away have little knowledge of what tin mining means to this part of the country. Let them come and see, say the miners, but they know they probably won't.
12 years. Preparing to suffer master. Owner Peter Savile's decision to withdraw the horse from the Epsom Derby.